Greg Smith here, founder and CEO of Buntu. So proud to be part of the Prosperity Show with Prosper uh, and looking forward to uh, having this conversation. Buntu is really about collaborating on work that matters with people who care to help build purpose-driven businesses. Our tagline is connection with intention. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Teravinga, and today we have a truly exceptional guest joining us. Greg, how are you doing, my man? Very well, thank you. Pros- prosper. I almost called you Prosperity because in that intro, you used the word Prosperity, which is so fantastic the way you position yourself in the market. I love it. Absolutely. Well, it's all about prosperity around here. And for those that are joining us right now, I want to introduce you to Greg. Now, Greg is on a mission to collaborate on work that matters with people who care to grow their purpose-driven businesses. Now, he's a maverick, a creative marketing genius, and he's here to amplify the human spirit of business leaders. Now, Greg, I've already welcomed you to the show. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey and how you actually arrived at your current mission of collaborating to create meaningful work? Yep. Thank you for the invitation to share that story and pull me up short if I go on for too long about it. People love to talk about themselves. So Prosper, by trade, by training, I'm an experiential educator. So I spent over 20 years of my career uh, working outdoors with young adults and corporates and youth at risk, leveraging the power of expeditioning outdoors to answer three main questions for those young adults. And the first question was always, who am I? And we use the outdoors and the um, the vehicle of abseiling and bushwalking and canoe touring and mountain biking and you know camping and eating over a fire, et cetera, et cetera, to help answer that question. And the second of three questions that I asked for my entire uh, experiential ed career was, who are we? So I've got a bit of a sense of who am I because we're providing each other on an expedition in an experiential format an answer to who you are as an individual, but who are we? What's the intention and how are we going to treat each other? What's the behaviour that we're going to exhibit as we move for a week or more together from point A to point B? And the third question that that whole piece of work was around was to ask the question, What's the legacy that we want to leave or the impact that we want to have? And as part of that work, I came across the word Ubuntu. And we used that concept of Ubuntu, which and I I don't want to um, share ice with Eskimos because you're South African and I am not. Well, you're from that part of the world anyway. It simply means I see you. I recognize you and I appreciate the fact that you are in my world because together my humanity makes sense. So after you know a very long career in that space, I sold my business to a large international not-for-profit, the largest one in the industry. Uh, and I worked with that not-for-profit for five years, but got to a point where my baby that I'd sold to them was deteriorating. And it was deteriorating for, in my opinion, <clears throat> only one reason. So despite internationally international standard operating procedures, pristine budgets, the employment of unbelievably dedicated young adults, um, world standard training and equipment, that organization took their eye off the customer experience ball. And they made some silly decisions, in my opinion. 
They put prices up without telling their clients that the prices were going up. They deteriorated the quality of the food. They, they did a whole bunch of little things that upset the decision makers who were spending money to bring hundreds of children, young adults, through our programs or through their programs. And when I, <clears throat> when I left, I started a consultancy called the Masters of Client Retention to answer one question for my clients. And the question that I wanted answered was, or wanted to help them answer was, how do you Velcro your existing clients to whatever it is that you do? So when all else is the same, what is your stunning point of difference? And when all else is the same, the place where you can play to create that stunning point of difference is in the human experience journey. So to be a master of client retention, in summary, maximize the humanity that you deliver. So you listen, you be tolerant, you listen to understand, you share your resources, you be generous of spirit, you go where the energy takes you and your client so that you get a win for you, the business owner, a win for your client. And in our case, it's often the win for the client of my client. So the best example that is simple to share is that uh, if you go to the airport and you jump on a Jetstar flight in Australia, Jetstar flies mainly A320. And you fly from point A to point B. And as you look down at your ticket, your ticket will say passenger. And you will have, have had the experience of being efficiently transacted from the point of booking through the turnstiles at the airport onto the aircraft. And you have a certain experience. And what we're looking for as passengers, because that's what your ticket says, is that we are looking to get somewhere safely. We're looking for a mode of transport from A to B. If you go to the other end of the tarmac <clears throat> and you jump in a different A320, and this time it has a Singapore Airlines insignia on the tail, your ticket says guest. You get a drink before takeoff. You get a hot towel after takeoff. The staff somehow managed to show up having done the emotional labour that says to you subliminally, at worst, that they actually care. Same machinery, two different experiences. So overlay that concept over accountant A versus accountant B. Mortgage broker A versus mortgage broker B. Electrician A versus electrician B. A's and B's essentially do equivalent work. Yes, the price points might vary slightly, but when the work is equivalent, the customer experience or the human experience that you deliver can be the defining factor. And it turns out that caring is profitable. So off the back of the um, Masters of Client Retention, that business morphed by 2019, morphed into a business that we named Send Handwritten. And to this day, we still send handwritten wax sealed mail all around the world for business, for lead gen and client retention. And the obvious question is why? Everybody's gone digital. Well, that's precisely the reason that we've, we made the decision to go analog. The physical mailbox is still a place where you can whisper and be heard because it's an increasingly unused channel to market. I'm not for one minute suggesting that it becomes your only channel to market, but when integrated with digital channels, it becomes a powerful lever for interrupting attention of busy, distracted business people. So that was send handwritten. You need me to hold up there. Have you got a, does that create a question? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite intrigued with your journey so far, but I don't want to uh, step in. Why don't you go ahead? I'll be okay. 
here at Ubuntu and yeah, definitely our audience. Good. Okay, thank you. So <clears throat> what we got with Sim handwritten was that we needed to operate in the context of verified data. So you can't send mail to a corporate address unless you have verified that the human being that you're looking for the attention of is actually at that address, you know, within the time frame that you want the mail to land on their desk. So not only did we create a data team, we created a call team who are, in our case, in Australia, onshore, calling as English first language speakers to overcome some of the prejudice that is in the marketplace around non-English first language speakers on the phone in business. So data cards and calls became the context. But around that, stunning, <clears throat> stunning creativity, clever strategy and integration with digital platforms, telephone, um, text, email. So that integration became our sweet spot. We got to the middle of 2022, Prosper, and something wasn't working as well as it had been working. There was a change. And for ease of reference, let's call that the middle of 2022. And what we put our finger on was that at this point in our history, given COVID, floods, fires, interest rates, Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera, like you name your um, poison in terms of bad news, the marketplace, which is made up of human beings making business purchasing decisions, the marketplace is anxious. And it is consistent and it is real and there is plenty of objective research to support my assertion that people are currently anxious. Not everybody, but it is a majority. So we asked ourselves the question, why is it that data cards and calls don't seem to be working quite as well as what they were? And what we got was that our clients had be were becoming increasingly unsure of who they are. So if we're gonna <clears throat> if we're gonna help them get attention, market their business, help them tell the stories that they need to tell to the audiences where that message is going to resonate, we needed to help them get clearer on who they are. More than that, metaphorically, we wanted to wrap our arms around our clients and let them know that it's not all bad news. There is a solution. There is an antidote to this anxiousness. And the antidote in summary is involving ourselves human to human in mutually edifying advocacy oriented relationships that mutually support each other. What that does is it reduces the need on an advertising spend and it amplifies the value of affiliates and strategic alliances and other ways of going to market where there isn't such a loud, uh, such a, a big need to shout. Yeah. So, under the Buntu brand, with that intention of nurturing, not pitching, we developed six services. And these services are now highly valued by the community that we're working with. And the first service we call Uncover You. We don't ask, what do you do, Prosper? We ask, Prosper, who are you? What is it that motivates you to get out of bed every day and have the impact that you have decided to make? Because you are a man of significance, you have a story to tell, and you have a God-given gift that is your right to share. So let's find out who you are. If you're a mortgage broker, wake me up when it's over. If you're a facilitator of wealth for middle-aged women who've suffered divorce, now you've got my attention. The second service we call Express You. And Express You in older, less contemporary language 
could be called a branding exercise. In my opinion, branding is often bullshit. And what I mean by that is that if you are Coca-Cola and you spend billions of dollars a year promoting your product and your tagline is Coke is life and you sell poison, I've got a problem. That's considered good branding. Contemporary branding for small to medium enterprises, in my opinion, is about the authentic expression of your intention to audiences that resonate or with whom you want to resonate in channels that interrupt their attention. So a client who works with us under uh, our Express You service will end up with a set of branding guidelines and iconography and logos and taglines and colors and all of that stuff. But behind that will be a deeper intention to share their intention, the impact that they want to have. The third service we call Amplify You. So this is about taking the genius of our client <clears throat> and amplifying it both online and offline. Online, we have chosen LinkedIn to be the space that we have deep, deep um, resonance with and expertise in. So helping our clients optimize their profiles, create <clears throat> and deliver intelligent or quirky, meaningful, fair income <clears throat> or authentic messaging sequences to invite people to be connected to them and respond with work that adds value. So it's optimize, message. The third service in that space we call, uh, or is about uh, leveraging your LinkedIn content. So if you're going to put the work into creating awesome content and three people see it, that's not an amplification of you. That's a dilution of you. So we help our clients leverage their content. And the fourth thing that we help them do is leverage the power of LinkedIn webinar events. Now, that might be a Zoom event. It might be a face-to-face -face event. It might be an audio event. Could be all sorts of different um, end point deliveries of a, a, a LinkedIn webinar event. The, the challenge or the trick to that is to leverage your channel partners. So you could invite 100,000 people a week to a LinkedIn webinar event if you know what you're doing. And then nurture those who have registered is the next part of the, the process. The fourth service we call, sorry, that was online. This is still Amplify You. We also amplify our clients offline. And let's just say that Send Handwritten is the offline amplification of our clients, data cards and calls. The fourth service we call Develop You. I don't know about you, Prosper, but I am often really bored, put to sleep by contemporary corporate communication. It's boring, it's beige, it's all the same, the tonality never changes, and it is sleep-inducing. <laughs> Develop You is about getting right to the edges of what's possible creatively. Thinking totally outside the box about taking you from the beige and the boring and the bland to a community asset or to a witness of something of significance. And I could share stories around that, but for now, imagination and creativity in the corporate space, if you think mortgage broking, finance broking, accounting, trades, it's sadly missing. Our humanity and our creativity and our artistry injected into those otherwise boring places helps our clients stand out and get the attention <clears throat> that they so deserve. The fifth service we call Support You, and that's, Prosper, that's about us becoming our clients' plug-in, plug-out business development team. 
You'd like something achieved in the next month? Great. Plug us in three hours a week for the next month and we'll get it done. If you like what we do, <clears throat> keep us plugged in. And if we somehow muck it up, if you get the result and don't need to continue, then unplug us. You'd like 500 lines of data? Wonderful. Plug us in. You'd like some support, really getting creative with something in your business, your scripting of your emails, your your messaging. You'd like to appreciate or, surprise, or supply some surprise and delight to your clients or your prospects. We can absolutely help with that. We're very clever at surprise and delight. And the sixth and final service that we offer, Prosper, we call <clears throat> the develop. We call it human experience journey. H X J. So creating the journey for the human being that is engaging with your business in a way that resonates with them rather than leaves them feeling sold to, pitched to, or otherwise manipulated, forgotten. That's that's our genius. And for now, that's enough. Because <laughs> I just boiled your ocean. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you so much. And I'm quite happy you've compressed all these years of experience um, you know, into one big say masterclass um of uh Greg Smith, all in a nutshell. But obviously, for those that were listening, um, obviously people have a lot of questions, and I too have a few questions. But before we jump into these questions, I wanted you to indulge me a little bit, Greg. The theme of what you worked around centers around a concept that I want you to maybe explore with me right now. While you were working with the youth, right, you were sort of taking them on these experiences, you know, getting them to figure out who they are, uh, what they are in, you know, in in the context of the environment that we're working in and who are they becoming uh, in a way that would then help them understand what their next uh, part of their journey is what the next step would be because obviously these experiential um, activities will change these people so they actually go back and become useful human beings um, that are you know helping and serving in whatever the path they then choose out of that and yeah. you seem to be now doing that with adults and people that are already running a business in order to create or pave a way for people to actually experience humanity. Now, where I want you to indulge me is this part here, Greg. When I was growing up, we had what was called, um, you know, a rite of passage or an initiation where kids turning about 13, 14, 15, you're called in to, you know, the center of the, 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 the town and you go through activities that sort of break the pattern of you being a key to becoming an adult. And it's an, it's a sort of proverbial tap on the shoulder to say you're an adult now. And obviously in this context, by you showing somebody who you are and what you are in relation to the universe and the world, you're literally humbling someone because everything is, is running, whether they are or whether they're not present in that particular space. So for somebody to feel entitled that their world is not moving just because something is not working for them, you know, it really shows them, hey, look at the universe. The trees are growing, the leaves are growing, and you had nothing to do with that. Now, mm -hmm. coming to what you have created with Ubuntu and the, all these services that you're creating, you are literally creating some sort of rite of passage for business owners so they can start really performing in an authentic sort of way. I don't know if I missed the whole gist of what you have created here. Oh, have we just landed onto something? Maybe what's your comment on that? Prosper, I, I've lost track of how many... Um podcasts or interviews I've done in the last three or four years. Your question is the best question I have been asked by any of those people in any of those interviews or podcasts. Your ability to incisively go right to the core 
of what is driving the Buntu team is goosebump creative. Like you've given me goosebumps because you have expressed exactly what it is that we are up to. But if I say that to the corporate world, that the Buntu team have created a rite of passage to go from where you are in business now to where you want to be in business in the future, I don't think we would get the cut through that we need. Because what it sounds like is, particularly for men, it sounds like, uh uh-oh, something must be wrong with me if there is a path needed to be shared or to be uncovered for me to get to somewhere else. Men do not like to have it suggested that they don't have it totally together. So the concept of a rite of passage. Now, I don't want to misappropriate this, but I'm going to share my best version of a rite of passage. And I'm going to share that thought <clears throat> out of what I've been told by in, a, a dig, Indigenous Australian people that I've known over the years that have helped us create rites of passage for young adults. And the summary is this. The community of Indigenous folk get around the 13 or 14-year-old boy. And driven by that boy's age, they do want to take him from being a boy to being a man. And the process is remove the boy from his mother or from the usual community that supports him, put that boy through some training, and it would be physical and psychological and uh, emotional training. Then once that training is considered complete, to test that boy against his new information and his new insights and his new training and his new connection with the stories that make sense for that community. And once that test is passed, and if I was an elder, I would not give a participation certificate to somebody. It would have to be a genuine understanding and um, passing of a series of tests, but once that series of tests has been passed, then the boy is reintroduced to the community and celebrated as a man. And there's a whole bunch of depth to that, and that's a very superficial white Caucasian male version of something that I have never directly participated in. So forgive me if I've upset anybody. But that whole process reduces the belief that as a human being, I am entitled. And I think we are dealing with an epidemic of entitlement. And the entitlement is never, or it's rarely, tested by the laws of this planet. And the laws of this planet say that you can't plant your corn at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon and reap it at 4.30 next Monday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the laws of the planet, it is my belief that one of the laws of the planet is you cannot hide on your screen and truly engage with this planet and the people on this planet as a fully developed human being. And the challenge that we've had during you know, the last couple of years with all that has gone on is that we as a community have deliberately or by accident been uh, forced to disconnect from the natural, natural world. We have been forced to disconnect from each other, although we pretend that via social media we are connected. And out of all of that comes this dissonance, this misbelief, that we are connected. Well, if marketing is bullshit, this is even a bigger BS story that I don't buy. And so the work of the Buntu team, you are absolutely correct. It is a rite of passage to take somebody from being a mortgage broker to a facilitator of wealth. That's a... a you, you, you and I have a mutual friend who would call the mortgage broker the brown box. The facilitator of wealth is the stunning point of difference that actually engages. 
because what's in it for me, I hear in, Greg, I'm going to help facilitate your wealth versus Greg, I'm a mortgage broker. So the rite of passage, it's not so much a rite of passage, it's a nurturing of the human spirit from where they are now to where either they want to go or where this team can encourage them to be in the future, financially, physical health-wise, psychologically, emotionally, impact. And here's the thing, Prosper. Here's the thing. Human beings crave amongst uh, um, uh, they crave among a whole lot of other things, but they crave two or three main things. And what I want to lean into this morning on this call is that human beings crave psychologically and emotionally significance. Absolutely. Now, whether that comes with a sense of belonging, whether that comes with being loved, there's a whole bunch of other things. Significance is at the core of all of that. Absolutely. So what makes being special so special? What makes Prosper special yet so special? And part of the answer to that is the significance, not of what you do. You're good at what you do. So there's a bunch of other people that do exactly the same thing as Prosper. What is important is that Prosper, who is very good at his stuff, is a man of significance having an impact on the people that are in his circle of influence so that when Prosper sits on his veranda in his rocking chair in 50 years' time, he can look at his beloved and ask the question, how did we go, dear? <laughs> and if the answer is, you know what, Prosper, my darling, with the resources that we were given, with the health that we were gifted, with the relationships that we managed to create, we have done our best and the planet is better for us having been here. That's the end game for the Buntu team to help our clients, not so much a rite of passage, but to move from point A to point B where they can have that same conversation with whoever's important to them towards the end of the journey. That's what gets me out of bed every day. I love this. I love this. And throughout your journey, you know, the whole significance of working with people on so many different levels in so many different environments really showcases because people are completely different, predicated on the environment they've been placed in. Um, you know, like you mentioned, you know, the last couple of years, people got a bit anxious but it's still the same country, still the same uh, sort of environments, but they just got anxious because of the information that they were given. And um, obviously with what you're working on and how you are working with people, you're making it so easy for people to bring out, um, you know, that authentic side of them. Now, there's been so many pivotal moments in your life and in your business and how you actually came to be. But one of them simply would have been the time when you were introduced to the actual word Ubuntu. Now, can you just maybe get us back to that uh, place? And first of all, I mean, you, you did allude to what it means and you said you can't sell Ice to an Eskimo, um, obviously, but for my audience, <laughs> they would definitely want to know what it means and what it actually means for you. Um, you know, that way they have an understanding of how all the other six services now actually come together in order for you to be able to serve them. Yeah. So, so the first time I heard the word was during my outdoor uh, education career. And, and I wasn't in the field all the time, Prosper. I was CEO of a company that I founded to deliver this style of education. So I did that for a large portion of my career. So it was my job to stay on the front foot, stay ahead of the curve and to be in the industry, um, but then to be training my staff to stay at that cutting edge. And the concept of Ubuntu came to me uh, via a guy called Mark Collard. Um, who at the time was working for a company called Project Adventure. And uh, I think it, I don't know if it was a Project Adventure resource or not, but there was actually a pack of cards. 
with a, and I don't want to go into the details of that, but it wasn't playing cards. They were that size, <clears throat> but they'd been developed in order to use with groups of kids outdoors to help find common language between otherwise seemingly different human beings, boys and girls or gay and not gay or fat and skinny or tall and short. And like there was a whole bunch of joy we bought to the facilitation of those programs that we were running using this concept of I am more because we are. And that, that that's here somewhere. I don't have them in my hand at the moment, but that pack of cards stayed with me and I used them and, you know, until they were well-worn. And so the day that somebody said to me, and they did it like this, it was a face-to-face -face meeting, and they were not South African, but it was a face-to-face -face meeting, and I remember they put their, arm, their hands on my shoulders, and they said, Greg, whoa, whoa, stop for a sec. And I think I was probably complaining about something at the time. And they looked at me, and they didn't shake me, but they looked at me and they said, Greg, I hear you, mate. I see you. It will be okay. Together, we will figure this out. Mm. And it was in the context of me playing with this pack of cards, these Ubuntu cards, where the word all of a sudden made sense in my own heart. Now, I didn't lean into the Ubuntu word, you know, every day in that business. But what happened, Prosper, was that as we in 2022, as a, a, a business development team here helping other businesses grow, we needed to get a concept together that could be expressed in a, in a simple way to express our intention. Right. And that's where we decided to lean into the concept of Ubuntu. Now, we had to take the U off the front of the word because Ubuntu has been appropriated by a large tech platform called Ubuntu. It's a, I don't know much about it. I'm not a tech head, but it's a large tech platform. We simply took the U off the front and called ourselves Ubuntu with the intention of the word intact. Connection with intention. Fantastic. Now, let me just maybe raise a few hairs, um, you know, behind your neck there. So, Ubuntu literally translated means people. Ubuntu means humanity. So without... Oh, my goodness. I did not know that, Prosper. Without you actually realizing your whole life, everything you have done has been revolving around people. So one person is called Muntu. So mm -hmm. Muntu just so happens to actually mean what it is that you are saying. So I, I would have thought you really had that grasp and congratulations for actually coming <laughs> up with something that resonates. Mm. You see, the, 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 yeah. the reason why this is super important right now is because Ubuntu as a whole is just a philosophy which depicts I am because you are. Mm. Looking at this video right now, I am able to be called a show host because you are there to be interviewed. I am able yeah. to be called a show host because my audience is there to listen to this show. Mm -hmm. You are able to be called a show guest because you've got a story to tell and there's an audience mm -hmm. to hear that. If we take yeah. that away, you are not a show guest the moment we click off of this video. You've become yeah. Greg. And mm -hmm. in that context, are you a dad, a brother, an uncle, a CEO? Mm -hmm. So anytime mm -hmm. you are in front of someone, you happen to be that person because they allow you to be. Yeah. Have, have, have a, an example again, sit in a train. 
If you're sitting in a train, there's no CEO, there's no doctor, there's no lawyer, because we're not in a context of where you are needed to be called that. So you are not that because you're not there. So I, I just wish a lot of people would understand that so much in a way that you have actually uh, sort of conceptualized it and put it in in, in, in human form. So who are the clients um, that you you know, tend to work well best with and what sort of core desires uh, do they seek without them realizing that this is what they need? Because this is something that when it hits you, you get it. But some people mm. don't know what to look for if they don't know if it exists. So who who works mm. best with you to actually um, get the um, core six uh, services that you offer at Ubuntu? Yeah, and, and thank you for the question. Um, Seth Godin, I need to share this. Um, Seth Godin... Um, recently caused me to cry sitting in a train. So for the last 12 months, we've been trying to workshopping internally how we express what it is that we are up to with Ubuntu. And what we came to was that it is our job to help amplify the significance of the human beings that we're working with and for. And so this concept of significance has become front and centre. And I was sitting on a train in Sydney three or four months ago planning our webinar, which was we've called it the Significance Series. And across my phone as I'm sitting on the train came the, the announcement of the release of Seth Godin's new book called The Song of Significance. That caused me to tear up because Seth Godin had been listening to me, which is not true, but that's how it felt. The serendipity is uncanny there. Correct. So one of the things that Seth shares is that work is not working. It's become relatively dysfunctional, and you and I do not want to be somebody else's lead. We do not want to be part of the machinery. We want to be of significance. And so the people that we want to work with, um, Prosper, the main group of people that I'm looking for the attention of are people that are at the hub. People are that are at the hub of other or, or business networks. So, for example... There are three types of accountants in my mind. There's thousands of different types of accountants, but in Greg's mind, there's three. There's your boring beige suburban accountant. He does your tax. He helps you with a little bit of wealth creation, and he'll charge you a reasonable amount of money to do the work that he does, and it's very transactional. Nothing wrong with that. I am not dissing accountants. The second sort of accountant is a clever accountant. And what he or she does is they get it that they've got, say, 100 clients and they encourage their 20 staff that work in their accounting practice to, wherever possible, use the services of their client. So go to their restaurants, go to their hairdressers, use the barbers, um, use those digital marketing people, whatever it happens to be. And the accountant will encourage his team and his own family and and close colleagues to use the services of his client. He is a hero accountant though. A hero accountant gets it that not only does he need to do those first two, two things, he also needs to encourage his clients to use the services of his client. So the accountant is at the hub, is at the center, and the spokes are his clients, but around the rim of that accounting practice, is the encouragement of work being done together for, for each other and with each other. So when it comes time for one of those clients to consider changing accountants, but that accountant is part of his or her business development team because they keep getting leads out of these 99 other clients of the accountant, that accountant is now a hero in the mind of all 100 people that belong to his circle of influence. I'm looking to work with 
that type of accountant, that um, tradey um, supply company. I'm looking to work with professional service providers who get it that it's not just about a transaction. I'm looking to work with people that are providing uh, digital marketing services. Why? Because digital marketing services people generally are not skilled like we are at delivering a combination of LinkedIn and offline pattern interrupt services. So if you're a digital marketer, usually you've got a finger in a whole bunch of different digital channels. Master of all trades, sorry, <laughs> jack of all trades, master of maybe one or two. So with I'm looking for those human beings who get our philosophy. I don't want to sell this anymore, um, uh, Prosper. What's coming now are people are hearing about us and they're going, oh, I'm so sick of the noise, Greg. Can you help me calm the noise in my own head? Ground me so that I can amplify the significance of what I'm up to. And generally, it's around let's get clarity on who I am. Let's express that. Let's amplify that on LinkedIn. And then, Greg, can you give me some back-end support to make all that happen? Because I'm so busy working in my business, I don't have time to work on it. Can you relieve me of some of the minutia, some of the daily tasks that are just taking my attention? So professional services prosper. We're getting phenomenal traction in the tradey space, in the construction industry at all sorts of different levels. Uh, business coaches, public speakers, authors, the, and digital marketers. Digital marketers are prime for us at the moment. Fantastic. And uh, thank you so much for that. Now, for the uninitiated, where will be the best place to get started on their journey? Um, you know, what, what sort of channels would you recommend that people um, go on to so that they can start their journey with uh, the team at Ubuntu? Yeah, so... The, the best thing to do is to jump onto buntu, B-U-N-T-U dot com dot A-U and click on one of the buttons on there and grab at least 15 minutes with me. Other than that, it's simply greg at buntu dot com dot A-U. Fantastic. Absolutely. Make sure, I will make sure that all those links are in the show notes there so that our audience will definitely start that path. Yeah. Now, and and Prosper, just I, I I didn't mention it, but LinkedIn is also we're we're voracious in LinkedIn. We're in there all the time. Absolutely, I remember when you were quite shocked that I didn't have any LinkedIn presence, and you're like, "Wait a minute, what was going on?" But we have since affixed that. Now, Greg, obviously your history and your path has crossed with so many significant. Uh, people, and uh, I just wanted to bring one up to the attention of our audience. You've had a significant conversation with one of the most famous Catholic nuns who dedicated her life to caring for the destitute and the people that were dying in the slums of Calcutta. First of all, who was this amazing and significant lady that I'm about to talk about? Yes, I had a very frightening conversation one morning, Prosper, with Mother Teresa. <laughs> now, hearing that humbles me so much because you're also having a conversation with people like myself and everybody else that you're talking to. I don't think anyone can ever come back from having spoken to Mother Teresa and, you know, us mere mortals would, um, you know, be of little significance. But tell us, what was going on when you had this conversation with uh, Mother Teresa? So the context was that um, as part of my um, education university training, I was invited on a trip to India uh, to, like we called it an immersion experience. So to be immersed in another culture, in another set of circumstances, to understand or, or to get an appreciation for the privilege that, a, again, a white Caucasian young adult was um, you know, living in and under here in Australia. And we visited leper colonies and we slept in a leper colony one night and um, uh, you know, we visited uh, you know, all sorts of schools and places that were working at the cutting edge with 
the downtrodden in India as part of this um, expedition. And one of the experience that, experiences that was offered while, while we were in Calcutta, I was invited to go to Mass at Mother Teresa's mother house in Calcutta, and I'm pretty sure it was a 6 a.m. Mass. There were 12 boys on the trip. I was 19 at the time. Three or four of us got ourselves out of bed and went. It was a very quick service. It was a quickie, as they would call them, a quick Mass. Mass usually goes for an hour. This one went for 30 minutes. So at about 6.30, out onto the balcony outside the uh, the room where Mass had been said, um, Mother Teresa appeared and our chaperone for the trip, the um, the, the elder statesman of the, the expedition, said, uh, Mother, I'd, I'd like to introduce you to the Australian boys that have come with me this year. And I was first in the line. And Mother Teresa was quite a short lady. She must have been only four or five foot tall. I don't know how tall she was. So she looked up at me and she asked a very direct question and I did not know how to answer it and I am embarrassed with the answer that I gave. As an older man, I'm embarrassed. At the time, I didn't know what to say. So she said to me, why are you here? And I bumbled and stumbled and I said, oh, mother, I've come to understand how the other half live. And what I meant by that was, and I didn't mean to be respectful, and she didn't take it that way. I meant I'm trying to understand who I am, what my mission on this planet is, and the difference that I want to make. Sound familiar? (laughs) But that's the way I expressed it. And she said, go home. I said, "Uh, yes, mother, no mother, three bags full mother. Um, She said, I send my sisters halfway around the world every year to go and work with your Aboriginal people in Australia. There is no need for you, young man, to come halfway around the world to find out how the other half live. They are under your nose. Now give me your hand. And I gave her my right hand. And she said, I don't want that one. I want the other one. I went, okay. So I gave her my left hand. And as I gave it to her, she grabbed my wrist and she squeezed the five digits on my hand. And she said, you say this every night before you go to sleep. You did it for me. Goodbye. And she dismissed me and went on to my best mate, Michael. And I don't know what she said to Michael. I haven't asked him. Don't know why I haven't asked him. I've never thought to ask him what she said. But I was so uh, in the moment that I have never forgotten You did it for me. So her message was, you're here for a reason. Go and figure out what that reason is. But ultimately, you're doing it for, in her case, for your God, for a a bigger purpose than you. Wow. And I was dismissed. And uh, a soldier for the cause. (laughs) Absolutely. That is such a surreal moment where you know somebody that is that respected with such gravitas and significance would also impart onto you these words that you definitely have to live by now knowing what you know now and knowing who you've become now Greg in the words of Mother Teresa why are you here <laughs> That what a great question, Prosper. And there, there's probably a business answer to that, and there's a much deeper personal answer to that. The business answer is in that tagline that we offered right at the beginning. I want to collaborate on work that matters with people who care to help grow purpose-driven businesses. It is my belief that entrepreneurship is an amplifier for doing good. That's the business answer. Underneath that business answer, the much more personal answer is that getting a grasp on what the hell all of this, meaning life, all of this is about, is the core question of every philosophy, religious pursuit, um, uh, every pursuit about seeking the meaning of man uh, 
is the game that I'm playing, and it's not a game, it's a pursuit, the game that I'm playing behind that business-driven intent. If I can understand my soul-driven intent and what it is that I was put here to do and the impact that I can have with the resources and the finances and the education and the health that I've been gifted with, that's what I'm up to. I'm trying to figure that out just as we all, I believe, just as we all are. I don't know. I'm not, not sure how good that answer is in this context, but for now, that's as good as I've got this morning, Prosper. I think I think I think you've nailed it. Because I recently believe we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And for us to be able to live the best life, we need to learn as much as we can, which is what you have done. Learn from even the people you've been working with, learn from Mother Teresa, learn from your experiences. And learn from the greats, like, um, you know, Seth Gordon, who serendipiously appeared to you mm. in a time of need. So mm. once you have learned that, we now have an obligation to send the elevator down, which is exactly what you're doing. So the next generations, the next people will also get a lift up just so they don't take the stairs because it takes a while. So... Mm. In everything that you are doing, the leaving, the learning, and the contributing, I think you are absolutely personifying the Ubuntu concept, which basically mm. means we are all doing this just so the next person can see a brighter day. So on behalf yeah. of everybody else's life, you are yet to touch. Thank you. And I actually appreciate you My for pleasure. the time that we've spent on the call today. And, um, you know, the inspiration and the insights that you've shared with us, because it's not every day that you find people that are grounded, that are not just looking for the algorithm to shape what their day is going to look like. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. And My absolute pleasure. And thanks for your incisive nailing of the link between that past work and who I am in that past life to the work that we're doing now. It is rare for somebody to see that so incisively. That's very, very impressive, Prosper. You got it. Well, it's a good thing we recorded that because people were not going to believe that you said those things. I mean, <laughs> that concludes <laughs> our enlightening conversation with Greg Smith, the founder and CEO of a truly unique and impactful business. Like I say, Greg, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, leaving us with so much to think about. I think what you are working on, the work that matters for people who care is such a unique concept that it needs to be amplified there. And I'm hoping we have managed to really uncover who you are and let you express the you that you are um, while amplifying the message that you've got for the world there. And in the process, it has and will develop the people that are going to be listening to this into um, businesses that are profitable and enjoyable and also a happier existence for those that are going to be around them. I really then appreciate you. you for supporting us by being on the show today. I'm humbled, sir. Very good. Thank you. Fantastic. Feelings Thanks. mutual, Prasma. Thank you. <laughs> and to our viewers, if you are time challenged at the moment, uh, and if you're a business leader that's looking to really amplify your impact and make a difference, I encourage you to uh, reach out to Greg, uh, really um, connect with him. I think there's a click let's chat button that is on the website. We're going to be showing you every part of his website that you need to connect with him on and also connect with his webinars on LinkedIn just so you could actually start the conversation that could change the cost of your business, just like it's changed um, a few other people that uh, you know Greg has been able to work with. And um, I think he's also transformed himself in the process, which is the biggest transformation any business owner should ever embark to be on. And um, if you've been watching up until now, thank you so much. I know it's a bit of a long one, but stay tuned 
for more episodes on the Online Prosperity Show, where we bring you insights and stories of individuals who are making a meaningful difference in the world of business. Greg, thank you once again. Thank you, Prosper. Fantastic chat. To our viewers, bye for now.